Reminence, what was your initial reaction when you heard that Pope Benedict XVI had passed away? I was very sad. As a matter of fact, I was surprised uh, how sad I was. Uh, I knew he was sick. I, I knew he was dying. Uh, I was rather pleased because I thought I'd heard that he'd rallied and was disconcerting the ex experts and going to live a little bit longer. I'd known him well enough. I admired what he was about. I thought he was very good for the church. And so it was uh, sad uh, to see another st wonderful stage in church history ending. When people look back at his papacy, one of the highlights they point to was World Youth Day in Australia when you were cardinal there in Sydney. What are your memories of that? Well, we would, uh, we, we Australians, we Catholic Australians would certainly say that. Uh, and uh, we believe he's being buried in the uh, chasuble that he used in World Youth Day in Australia. But whether that's Australian propaganda or not, we're, we're not uh, completely uh, sure. It really impressed uh, the great majority of Australians who are not particularly religious, uh, but open. And uh, my greatest memory, he, he insisted that the great liturgical celebrations, the masses, that we should work hard that they are prayers and acts of adoration. And so he insisted on reverence and quiet. And we had something like 400,000 at the final mass, the biggest gathering in Australian history. And after communion, um, I could hear the birds singing. A wonderful moment of uh, recollection and, uh, and adoration and prayer. In your experience, what was he like one-on-one -on -one as, a, as a person? Oh, the complete opposite of uh, the caricatures of his enemies, uh, especially before he became uh, Pope. And people actually saw what he was like. You know, they called him the Rottweiler and the Panzer Cardinal and all that, which was absurd uh, because nothing Prussian about him. He was a Bavarian. He was a quiet, gentle, uh, pious man, absolute gentleman. Do you think that he took much notice of the characterizations or was he bothered by them? I think he was uh, slightly amused. I don't, think, I don't think he was particularly bothered because I, he was a highly intelligent man and he realised they were just so far from the truth that uh, they were um, irrelevant. Now, it's not to say that he was conservative. Um, but you see, we Catholics, it's a little bit difficult not to be conservative because we follow a man who died 2,000 years ago. And we say that he explained to us uh, the secrets of life, this life or the next life. As they say, a legacy is in the eye of the beholder. And over the coming days and weeks and years, there'll be much debate and analysis about his life and legacy. But what do you think his legacy should be? Well, you see, he died principally, uh, <laughs> well, he died, you know, from old age, but he was Pope. Now, what's the role of the Pope? It's not to be uh, the great uh, Catholic preacher. It's not to be the big television star. Most Popes in history had nothing like the theatrical and public leadership uh, capacities of John Paul II. Uh, the Pope has a scriptural role. He's the man of rock. He's the successor of Peter. He's the foundation of the church. Uh, he's the guarantor that the people in the pews are receiving the same teachings uh, that the Christ and the apostles gave and that the unity of the church, 1.4, 3 or 4 billion Catholics, is built around the figure of Christ and the apostolic tradition. Now, in these terms, Benedict was a magnificent success. He realised that the secrets of our vitality are um, in the redemptive activity and teaching 
of uh, Jesus Christ. That was his job. Uh, now, he wasn't the greatest administrator, greatest executive, uh, not a natural politician, um, not a backslapper as in the Irish-American uh, tradition, uh, but he did what he was um, supposed to, and that is to strengthen the faith of his brothers. It's uh, not to entertain uh, uh, the non-believers or those who have rejected uh, what we're about. They're an important constituency. We must try to reach them. Uh, but what is important is to reassure the people in the pews. Finally, if you were to summarise Pope Benedict as a person and his papacy in one word, what would it be? Well, then let me give two words. A Christian disciple. Cardinal George Pell, thank you very much.